Hello, Rover. It's me, Yang Yang. How have you been? Is life in Jinjo treating you well? You know I'm here if you ever need anything. Oh, Yang Yang, what's there to be shy about? If you want to see Rover, just tell him. So, what have you been up to these past few days? Feeling lonely without us around? Want to go see some fireworks? How about some moon shooting? With a festival just around the corner, there's a really cool spot we can take you to. Yes, it'll be the moon chasing festival in a few days. Though we celebrate this festival every year in Huanglong, given everything that has happened, this year's moon chasing festival in Jinzhou is sure to be quite special. Yeah, I caught them hanging lanterns all around City Hall. Every street and alley is going to be glowing. I can't wait to see it all lit up. And we've got special Jinzhou traditions you won't find anywhere else. Like tell you and Vale. Folks go there a few days before the festival to write their wishes onto paper. Then hang them on branches or toss them into Moon Tree Lodge. They say wishes made during these days are sure to come true. Works like a charm. Want to give it a go? All you gotta do is write down your wish. Real simple. Yang Yang, Baija, and I are already here. Great! See you at Taoyuan Vale. Adventures! Come on, let us in on it! So, so you mean that big Mount Firmament thingy that shocked all of Jinzhou? Uh, no, wait! That shocked all of Huanglong? Was it all because of you? Rover <laughs> saves the day yet again! With the Thrinodian defeated, our Sentinel and the Jinjo Magistrate have resumed their duties. Jinjo will have peace and prosperity once more. Yes. A rover? And the Sentinel did give you certain insights about your memory loss. While there's still much to uncover, at least we're on the right track. At long last! We can finally have some fun! Hey, what better time to celebrate than the Moon Chasing Festival, right? You, me, Yang Yang, and Baicha, the four of us will have a great time munching on treats and enjoying looking at the full moon. And let's not forget about the Moonlit Fair. It's exclusive to Chin Cho, happening only on the night of the festival. There's so much to eat, drink, play, and see. Wait till I show you the biggest lantern show of the fair. I know a spot that has the perfect view. That's a wonderful idea. Let's enjoy the festival together. I'm sure there'll be plenty of interesting things to pique your interest. Everyone in Jinjo will be there. There's a high chance we'll run into some familiar faces. Then it's a deal. Mark my words. With us around, you'll be in for a moon-chasing festival you'll remember for life. Shoot, we got so distracted with everything else, I almost forgot about your wish for the wishing tree. It's a huge deal. You won't want to miss it. That's right! Remember what I told you about wishes made under the wishing tree coming true? There are stories of it flying around, especially in recent years. The wishes people make on the eve of the moon chasing festival seem to come true in one form or another. A few years ago, Jin Jo had endless rain. Yang Yang wished for clear skies for the festival and a perfect moonlit fair. And guess what? The rain stopped and the moon was full and bright. Exactly. I thought I'd try my luck, but it actually happened. Perhaps just a pleasant coincidence. The Moon Chasing Festival does have a history of such coincidences. 
Maybe there's something to the Wishing Tree's magic after all. Or maybe there's a mysterious hero inside the Wishing Tree, making our dreams come true. Just like you. You save the world without anyone noticing. If you're not in the next season of Hero Plays, I'm out. All right. Better get to it before we chatter ourselves away again. The Wishing Tree is just up ahead. Off you go. We've already made our wishes. Mine's for the Moonlit Fair to draw in a huge crowd and for everyone to have a fantastic time. As for Yang Yang, she wished for endless happiness and happy reunions for all families. She, uh, eh, she's not really into wishes. Don't mind me. I tend not to make wishes. But if I did, it would probably be similar to Yang Yang's. There! You're the last one left! Oh, and don't forget about Abby. I'm sure the little guy doesn't want to miss out. <sighs> Who's there? What's going on? Make a wish. So tired. Just make one for me. Ugh, I want mm, lots of goodies to eat. Mm, I don't ever want to be hungry again. Yeah. Mm. Well, what did Abby say? Well, after you finished at the wishing tree. Come see us at the Moonlit Fair. Shizia and I will be helping out with preparations. <laughs> I'll be over at Ching Shi's Moon Shooter stall. It's not fully set up yet, but I can give you a sneak peek. Is that a robot? Wishes, wishes. Seems to be malfunctioning. Can't tell who left it here. I should try asking around. Excuse me, have you seen this robot before? Do you know where it's from? It's acting a bit strangely. Uh, it looks like one of those robots from the Moon Tree Lodge. One of its parts must be broken. It's like the wishing well under the wishing tree. People toss their hopes and dreams in there and poof. <laughs> Before you know it, someone makes them come true. You can even say it's part of the wishing tree, but wishes made at the lodge are more public. It's up to the wisher if they want to share. Anyhow, I saw that robot hovering around there earlier. Maybe that's where you should start your... The Moon Tree Lodge. Might as well drop by if it's at the wishing tree. Gotcha. Something seems to have malfunctioned with you. I'll take care of it. One moment. Run onboard diagnostics. Command initiator, Xian Li Yao. Authentication confirmed. Performing onboard diagnostics. Number 
possible that Patty's memory is overloaded with wishes, leading to anomalies mixed within them. Wishes. Analyzing cause. 21 solutions have been provided. Correction. 12. Correction. 4. Wishes. And solutions. Could this relate to what Chisha said about someone at Moon Tree Lodge making wishes come true? And Xiang Liao. The name sounds familiar. Perhaps... Isolating abnormal data. Running data correction. There. Give it another go, Patty. Performing onboard diagnostics. All systems normal. Patty feels full. That should do the trick for now. But where could the anomalies have... I apologize for keeping you waiting. It's just a temporary measure. I'll need to conduct a thorough examination later. Thank you for returning him to me. Yes. I've heard a lot about you from my colleagues at the Academy. Many of them are eager to meet you. I hope their enthusiasm hasn't been too overwhelming for you. Xiang Li Yao. A pleasure to meet you. I regret that I was away during your first visit to the Academy, but I'm glad to finally have the chance to meet you. I merely provided a few ideas, but I'm glad I was able to help. I was assisting the Ministry of Development with the damaged surveillance tower. By the time I returned to the lab, you'd already left. The next time I heard any news about you was regarding the battle at the Norfolk Barrens. This year's moon-chasing festival could only have proceeded thanks to your efforts. Well, come to think of it, I should be thanking you personally. The Moon Tree Lodge wouldn't have opened as planned if it weren't for you. Hero? <laughs> it's not as grand as that. It started by trying to help children fulfill their wishes. However, I do hope you can keep that between us. We imagine how disheartening it would be for people to learn their wishes were granted by a single person. I just want to do something within my power to pass on the joy we've all felt at least once in our lives. Seeing everyone's wishes come true and everyone enjoying the festival is enough for me. Fulfilling wishes. Happy! What will you taste like, important guest? Apologies. Patty doesn't mean anything strange by that. Patty was born in the Moon Tree Lodge. It deciphers the emotions behind wishes, analyzing their structure in a unique way. To Patty, every wish has a unique taste. You can think of it as Patty's way of understanding the world. Besides bringing Patty back, I presume you're here to make a wish as well? In that case, may I suggest we head over to the wishing stall for a chat? It's not far from here. Welcome. I, I wish I could extend a warmer greeting, but Patty has run into some technical difficulties. We cannot accept new wishes at Moon Tree Lodge until I resolve the issue. I apologize for the inconvenience. I would be glad to take note of your wish and have it prioritized once everything is resolved. How intriguing. 
In that case, I promise to do everything I can to make your wish a reality at the festival. For now, I must concentrate on restoring the Moon Tree Lodge as quickly as possible. In a nutshell, it appears Patty's malfunction is more than a straightforward data error. At first, I suspected an overload of Patty's analysis module due to an accumulation of wishes over the years. However, during my recent testing, I discovered unusual codes embedded within Patty's database. Like a virus, they spread drastically with the addition of each wish. Additionally, although it was only for a brief moment, I detected abnormal frequency fluctuations after connecting Patty to my terminal. In theory, a robot's data should not generate such fluctuations. It's too early to draw a conclusion just yet, but I can't leave the matter unresolved. It'll only be a matter of time before all the wishes stored in the Moon Tree Lodge are devoured by this abnormal code. I've isolated the four wishes with unreadable codes, pinpointing the source of the discrepancies. I plan to track down whoever made these wishes, try to fulfill them, and uncover the root cause of these anomalies. But before that, I need to try to decode the wishes corrupted by these anomalies. To minimize data loss, it would be best to complete this a week before the Moon Chasing Festival. With careful planning, it does have its challenges, but everyone's hopes and dreams for the festival are in these wishes. I don't intend to let them down. Yes. Yang Yang and the rest have set their hearts on this festival. I appreciate the gesture, but I wouldn't want to trouble you. <laughs> I see. Thank you. Well then, the Moon Tree Lodge welcomes its newest member. Seems we have a new friend now, Patty. You, Shanley, Yao, and Patty, wishes come true. Organize Moonlit Fair. Yes, the lodge opens to the public before the Moonlit Fair, but it still remains an important element of the festivities. The market vendors like to tailor their offerings according to everyone's wishes. There will be many interesting activities on the day of the fair, and preparations are well underway. Perhaps some of your friends will be among those attending. If you're interested, you can go and take a look yourself. analysis. This individual wishes to disappear from this world, indicating a desire to terminate their existence and for all associated social connections to be erased. Feasibility, 0%. Causing physical harm or manipulating human memories are actions strictly prohibited. Uh, this is Shang Li, Paddy's work buddy. Patty gathers and analyzes the wishes, and Shang Li helps make them become a reality. You have a good eye. Shang Li is indeed a very reliable companion. Analysis conclusion. The wish exhibits strong self-denial and self-destructive tendencies indicating a high level of danger. Prompt physical care and psychological intervention are advised. Patty does not understand this wish. Patty does not, cannot hurt humans. Just as I've suspected, this is the reason why this wish failed to be interpreted. 
The desire to disappear directly conflicts with Patty's underlying logic of not being able to harm humans. Written words are different from data. Data represent precise and unified content, while words may harbor meanings deeper than they seem on the surface. It is often the case that words spoken aloud sometimes contradict our innermost thoughts. Those willing to entrust their wishes to the Moon Tree Lodge hope their desires will be chosen and fulfilled. This suggests that Xiao Sheng still hopes for his voice to be heard. This is just my personal belief, but I suspect he's not truly ready to give up. I think the thought pains him. Which means he's... Yes, I believe that is the case. I want to uncover the true desire hidden in his wish and help him fulfill it. Will fulfilling his true wish help to ease his suffering? Yes, I hope it will. We should start by locating the Wisher. If I recall correctly, there is no Shaosheng at the Academy, so it's likely a pseudonym. Fortunately, we know that he's a researcher, so it shouldn't be too difficult for us to find him. And this paper, it's from a type of notebook commonly used at the Academy. There are faint traces of another type of writing on it. it seems to be some kind of code. I'll decipher these codes, and then we can... Uh, oh, uh, excuse me. Investigator Shang Li, we have a problem. We've got trouble in the lab. Prototype 49's core has gone out of control. Emergency protocols failed, and it's overheating as we speak. Lock down the lab. I'm on my way. What about the experiment locks? Already sent to your terminal, sir. All right. Tell everyone to stay calm. We still have time. There's been a momentary setback in the research. I need to handle it right away. I'm afraid I'll have to leave the task of finding Xiaosheng to you. Thank you. I'll meet up with you as soon as I have the issue resolved. Here, take Xiang Li with you to help with the investigation. I already have a few speculations as to the contents of the code. I'll call you once it's confirmed. Good luck, my friend. is confirmed to possess information related to Xiaosheng. Based on the writing style, paragraphing habits, and content of the wish, it can be inferred that Xiaosheng is likely introverted and may exhibit nervousness in public settings, difficulty in communication, and a preference for solitary activities. These characteristics match this individual's behavior. A definitive conclusion cannot be drawn. Master requests that Shang Li avoid making judgments about humans solely based on their external appearances. According to my data analysis, there is a 25.4% correlation between these two individuals. Shang Li proposes you make the decision on whether to proceed.
Wow, what a cute little robot. Would it feel weird to ask if I could do a sketch of it? I'll just do it at a distance once they've walked away. conditions. Detecting a rapid increase in air humidity and a significant drop in air pressure. Data suggests rainfall should be expected within the next few hours, covering 60% of the Jinjo area. Um, uh, that's right. The weather isn't actually all that great. I didn't realize. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't think you mean anything bad. I'm just not very good at talking to strangers, that's all. M my name is Judge. Um, nice to meet you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Wait, hold on. It's not the due date for the Sounds of Spring's Dawn yet. Do you mean to tell me they're changing the requirements again? Speculation. The Shaosheng mentioned by both parties does not appear to be the same individual. Um, excuse me, but is something wrong? Well, someone who goes by the name Xiao Sheng? Maybe a shy researcher? I've never heard of anyone by that name. Sorry, I couldn't help. I, I don't have a wide social circle, mostly just my painting clients. But I'll let you know if I do. You're welcome. I, uh, I'll be on my way then. Goodbye. showed no signs of abnormalities when mentioning the name Xiaosheng. Might as well ask another researcher. Detected. Individual meeting search criteria. Analyzing target identity. Researcher of the Department of Laboratory Evaluation, Huashu Academy. Suggested topics of inquiry, Xiaosheng, or work stress. Work stress? Rest assured, when discussing heavier topics, I will employ a light and humorous inquiry method. Been tossing and turning all week. Can't switch off these thoughts at night. I can't take it any longer. Been scrolling through the forums lately? There's this thing blowing up called Nighttime Blues Syndrome on the Hawashu Hive. Definition of noun. Nighttime Blues Syndrome. A popular term used to describe the state of today's youth that have lost their enthusiasm towards life due to excessive work and life stress. Symptoms include avoiding social engagements, reluctance to work, insomnia, and signs of depression. Further analysis reveals an 
correlation between the syndrome's traits and the emotional state of Xiaosheng, inferred from the wish made at the time. A few colleagues from other departments even used it as an excuse to ask for leave yesterday. They wrote, The world is such a wonderful place, filled with different kinds of sadness to experience each day. Ugh, lucky bastards. Taking time off whenever they want. And look at us, sweating bullets over research with no results in sight. How are we supposed to sleep? Is that the latest thing? You know, I don't usually visit those forums, but all this term, maybe it's because everyone's feeling the pressure lately. Relax, take some time off. You can leave the rest of your work to me. But don't let it get into your head. Smile, and everything will be a-okay. <laughs> you sure are optimistic at a time like this. Anyway, I really need to pass out for a while. She's all yours. Um, hello? You listening to our conversation the whole time? Anything I can help you with? Wait a second, it's you, isn't it? The one who sucked in a tacit discord with your bare hands. I didn't expect to meet you at a place like this. Are you here for something? Is it about the monsters? Or, or maybe ex Uh, no, never mind. Xiao Sheng. Pretty average name if you ask me. But I've never heard of anyone with that name at the Academy. Can you provide any extra information? Uh, uh maybe I can help you find him. Searching Nighttime Blues Syndrome and Xiaosheng as keywords. There are 417 relevant results found. Search results consist of forum posts made under the username Xiaosheng. Example result, another day today. Wait a minute. Analyzing someone's online behavior without their consent is a violation of robotics protocols. Searching protocol confirmed. Violation of protocol detected. Shangli, I'm sorry. Initiating self-destruct sequence. Apologies. <laughs> oh, well, its creator gave it some good features. It's fine. But do you mind me asking, why are you looking for Xiao Sheng in the first place? This question involves the individual's privacy. We are unable to disclose any details to those not directly involved. I understand. Uh, speaking of which, this robot looks rather familiar. Could it be from the Moon Tree Lodge by any chance? Ah, got it, got it. Hmm, it's almost time to set up the centrifuge. I need to make my way back and check on the samples. No information was obtained regarding Xiao Sheng's identity. Yes. We can always check the forums for any updates later. Now then, let's try our luck somewhere else. Attention. During our conversation with Shifan, another researcher was detected within close proximity. The individual has been eavesdropping on our conversation up until this moment. Eavesdropping? Wait a minute. Uploading the researcher's location to your terminal. Finally, some useful information for once. Cheng Li is always useful. Oh, you found me. I was just about to come talk to you anyway. You were eavesdropping on our conversation. Please explain your behavior. Sorry about that, but but I had a good reason for doing it. I can help you with the person you're looking for. You want to help him fulfill the wish he submitted with a pseudonym, but you don't know his real identity. Well, it's obvious just by looking at the two of you. That robot you have there is from the Moon Tree Lodge, right? I may not look the part, but I am an actual researcher. My name is Zhou Li. Xiao Sheng's my friend, and I know who he really is. And as a matter of fact, you've already met him. Precisely. So, you already guessed it. He probably realized who you were as well. Explains why he made up an excuse and left in a hurry. <sighs> 
still running away from his problems by the looks of it. I was just as surprised as you were when I first found out that Xiao Shang was actually Shifan. The two of us grew up together, went to school together, and entered the academy together. He's always been the center of attention, easy going, always fitting in effortlessly. But at some point in time, he started writing these negative posts on the forums. It didn't take me long to figure out Xiao Sheng was him. I know his writing style too well. Every time I asked him, he'd always wriggle his way out of it. And he started distancing himself from me and even transferred himself to another project team. Oh, that's from an accident during an experiment involving echoes a while back. It wasn't too bad, but it did leave a few symptoms. I haven't been able to operate any precision instruments since then. At first, I thought that maybe Shifan started distancing himself from me because I couldn't continue to work on his project anymore. But deep down, I knew he was not that kind of person. So I have a request. I want to know what kind of wish he made, and if possible, I want to help make it come true. I want to know what happened to him. The integrity of Zhou Li's information is estimated to be at around 99%. In order to fulfill the wish, providing relevant information is recommended. So that's how it is. Is he blaming himself for my injury? But that's not true. I've never felt that way. He wrote that wish, but he's still the man he was before. He still smiles and comforts others and helps people whenever they're in a difficult spot, which makes me feel even more worried for him. Thank you for telling me all this. I'm afraid Shifan and I aren't on talking terms at the moment, but maybe he'll listen to you. He's been fascinated by Echoes ever since he was a child. Echo-related research was all he'd been working on before he left our project. He loves Echoes so much, and now, He's given up on it completely. And I think this might be a good place to start to have him open up to you. Please, if you find out what his wish is, be sure to let me know. Hi there. How are things on your end? Transferring progress log. Transfer complete. Fantastic. It appears everything has been going smoothly. Long story short, I've managed to decipher the code from earlier. It's Echoes. The code mentions three Echo sample datasets Shifan once needed for his research. According to the Academy's archives, his research partner, Joe Lee, had an accident while searching for these Echoes. Shifan shut down the project shortly after. I hope this data can be of help to you. Once I've wrapped up here at the Academy, I'll meet you as soon as I can. Well then, it's time to look for some Echoes. Shall we go sightseeing together? Huh. Transmission is normal? Yes, that's everything. It's one of Shan Li's features. I can join you on your travels this way. I'll remotely control Shan Li, ensuring our audio, visual, and movement modules are in sync to keep our communications seamless. It's our quickest way to connect. Plus, I suspect Shifan might find it difficult to open up in front of a colleague from the Academy. Oh. 
That's fine. So, without further ado, let's be on our way. Back again. Uh, no luck finding Xiao Shang. What do you mean? This, this is echo testing data. What are you planning on doing with? Wait, where did you get this data? Shang Li and the rover are researching echoes, but have hit a dead end. They heard that Mr. Shifan is an expert in this particular field and are seeking his help. That was a long time ago. Oh, very well. What do you want to know? The data you gave me is packed with motion values. I would start by understanding how the echo adapts to different geographies. And these numbers... If we cross-reference them with standard values, the fitting coefficient nearly hits one. It looks like your model's direction might be on track. Oh... The more I look at this data, the more I think... Had it reached me earlier, things might have been different. This data... How much do you want for it? I'll pay anything! No... Even with this, I can't do it on my own. What... what do you mean? You have always had regrets, both for your friend and for your Echo research. I... I don't get your meaning. There was a serious accident during the experiment, and I was the one who shut it down. How could I... We saw the wish you made at the Moon Tree Lodge, but it seems that may not be what you truly wish for. Your true wish is to continue your research of echoes with the one and only friend who understands your passion. Is this correct? <laughs> I never thought my wish would actually be heard. You're right. I am Xiao Sheng, the loser who spends his nights complaining in bed. A washed up expert. I worked hard to get myself into the academy. My best friend was a real genius, and I was just an ordinary person who had to work my ass off in order to catch up with him. We promised to push the boundaries in Echo Research. I always believed we could produce groundbreaking results, maybe even touch the essence of the lament through our research. But due to my carelessness, he lost his chance to walk through that door completely. Yet, my stubbornness in continuing the experiment without adequate samples led to irreversible harm to my friend. I chose to continue the testing. That's why he missed the window for treatment. Not once did I visit him during the final test periods. And I was the only one left on the project. It wasn't a surprise the experiment failed in the end. It wasn't until I sat alone in the empty lab that I realized. Maybe everything I sacrificed, even my friend's future, was all for nothing. I had hurt my friend, given up on a career, and worked on something I wasn't actually interested in. But when I lie in bed awake at night, I feel regret all over again. I know I can't give up Echo Research. My obsession torments me. But I don't deserve to pursue it anymore. Oh, obsession. I've heard enough! Pull yourself together already! Jolie, where did you... I'll tell you right now, I never blamed you for what happened. I felt the same as you right from the start. On our path of pursuing new discoveries, I was willing to pay any price. What I don't accept is you calling quits halfway. But... 
I'm not done yet. Okay. It blows my mind that this is why you stopped talking to me. While I'm at it, you haven't changed a bit since we were kids. You get in the habit of running away from any problems you face that are non-research related. I'm... I'm sorry. It is wonderful to have someone to support you on the journey to achieve greatness in research. It seems even without our help, this wish has been fulfilled. This in turn indicates that Shaosheng's wish is not the source of the abnormal codes. Yes, there are more wishes to decipher. Now, we should make our way back to the Moon Tree Lodge. Hello. I hope you've been well. Remember how I mentioned that the stall vendors at the Moonlit Fair will adjust their offerings based on everyone's wishes? Based on the wishes we've received so far, I've thought of a few excellent themes. Maybe we can start preparing for them. Stay sharp. Life is in everything. Going again to the <laughs> Nowhere to hide. Or any sounds. <laughs> Show begins. <laughs>
Choose. Uh, this wish does bear some similarities to the one written by Shifan. This shows that just like Shifan, the woman who wrote this wish is desperate for help. We need to... Indeed, the wish shows a struggle between her longing and a promise she made to her son. She speaks of another world, likely hinting her child has passed away, leaving her alone with nobody to care for her. We can't draw a conclusion solely based on words alone. I'm curious as to what drove her to write these words. Her Aang and her son, what's their story? What promise did they share? What is it? Is there something on your mind? No, nothing. It's just that... Is it really for us to take on a wish tied to life and death? She knows the pain of separation from a loved one better than anyone else. If we handle this wrong, it might... So that's what you're worried about. It seems what Baija said about you is true. You do have a gentle soul. <laughs> Ever thought about becoming the mysterious wish-granter of Moon Tree Lodge yourself? You're right to be concerned, but... The Moon Tree Lodge's very existence is to have every wish be heard. Ignoring people's pain isn't right. Besides, we're not trying to force Mrs. Herring to make a choice. Our role is to listen, understand, and reflect. Ultimately, the choice lies in Mrs. Herring's hands, but it's getting late. Let me know when you're ready for our next task. Excuse me? You must be Mrs. Herting? Happy Moon Chasing Festival. Oh, hello. Happy Moon Chasing Festival. Who might you be? My name is Xiang Li Yao, and this is the rover. I apologize for the unannounced visit, ma'am. Rover? Rover? Why does that sound so familiar? Oh, I remember now. You're the hero of Jin Zhou, aren't you? Defeated that terrible beast. Everyone's been talking about it. My thanks to you. You've realized my son's vision. Oh, how joyful he'd be seeing Jinjo now. Since he was little, my boy dreamed of shielding me and all of Jinjo. He'd always say, I'll conquer the Thranodian one day, so everyone can live peacefully. That's what drove him to join the Midnight Rangers. Huh, yes. I always had faith that my son would achieve his dreams. He never stopped striving. Once, he and some rangers stayed behind during a mission to give folks like me a chance to flee. I know he did it to chase his dreams, but... But now he's gone. And he'll never witness the defeat of the Thranodians. I just... Oh. We used to celebrate every moon-chasing festival at the stalls. And he'd make wishes at the Moon Tree Lodge. His mischief sometimes tried my patience. But now, the silence is overwhelming. I can't help but wonder if... if he's lonely wherever he is. Oh, perhaps I should join him. But before he left, he made me promise to be witness to the day the Thranodians are finally gone. What am I to do? Oh dear, I've rambled on about my boy again. What brings you here today, dear? 
Do you remember the wish you made at the Moon Tree Lodge, Mrs. Herting? Well, of course. I do. Everyone knows the Moon Tree Lodge has magical powers. I see. You must have been sent here to help me fulfill my wish. Is that right? You granted his wish beautifully. I trust you might do the same for mine. Though, really, I have nothing much left to ask for. As I've mentioned in my wish, I find myself at a crossroads, unable to decide. I hope the Moon Tree Lodge can clear my doubts. When deciding your answer... Oh, yes. I recall they say it's best to speak the answer in front of the Moon Tree Lodge. Oh, yes, absolutely. Mrs. He Ing, might you consider a visit to the lodge with us? The Taoyuan Vale is preparing for the moonlit fair, and the atmosphere is quite lively. Perhaps a walk will lift your spirits. A walk? Oh, my heart hasn't really been in it since I lost my son. And, well, my legs don't carry me as well as they used to. Well, okay. If you think it might help find the answers, then perhaps we should try. What was that about? <laughs> it was just a little trick to get Mrs. Herting to join us at the lodge. You probably sensed it after hearing her story. The promise between Mrs. Herting and her son wasn't just about seeing his wish granted, but about finding peace in her life. In her grief, Mrs. Herting overlooked what her son truly wished for. I believe he wanted her to see Jinjo uniting to defeat the Thernodian, and the joy and security he sacrificed himself to safeguard. His wish for his mother represents not just life's simple joys, but also the courage to keep living. Though I can't say for certain, the moonlit fair in Taoyuan Vale holds the dreams of many. Perhaps there's something her son wanted her to see. A reason to embrace life. Oh, how are you youngsters falling behind an old lady? Come on, I'm waiting on you. This year's Moon Chasing Festival sure is lively. Indeed it is. Look at the crowd. Oh, so many things I've never seen before. It's quite exciting. You young folks must be thrilled with all this. Go on, enjoy yourselves. Don't mind this old lady. Mrs. Hying has been doing her best to stay cheerful since we arrived at Tao Yuan Vale. Let's take her to see more of the fair. <sighs> Happy Moon Chasing Festival. Would you like to browse our fan paintings? This one is exquisite. Just look at the fireworks bursting to life on the fan. I've never seen anything like it. You have excellent taste, Mum. This fan is the creation of Ms. Judge. It's the moon chasing festival from her imagination. The fireworks seem to fly to the other side of the fan. And these capes. Ah, oh, yes. They represent the Midnight Rangers. A special touch from Ms. Judge. She hopes that everyone who sees this fan will feel the liveliness of the moon chasing festival. And remember that the festivities are all thanks to the brave rangers. The fireworks flying to the other side are meant to share the celebration with the soldiers on the front lines. This year's fireworks display will be the biggest yet. Even the soldiers should be able to see it. You won't want to miss it. I'd like to buy one of these fails.
Oh my, Taoyuan Vale hasn't been this. Ah, the Moon Shooter Gallery. My son was so good. Every year at the Moonlit Fair, it was his favorite. This is her. <clears throat> Happy Moon Chasing Festival, everyone. Want to give the Moon Shooter game a try? Lots of rewards to be had. Shooting skills. Here are your prizes. These prizes? Did you make them yourself? That's right. The Moonlit Fair is about community, so we thought practical items would be more meaningful. A ranger instructor taught us how to make them. Even though he's no longer with us, his instructions and methods continue to guide us. These tools were a great help when we first joined the Rangers. We've now improved them to help even more people. Please take them, Mrs. Herring. I'm sure Shoyuan would want you to have them. And you are... You might not remember, but after Shoyuan passed, I tried to visit you. You didn't want to see me then. I never expected we'd meet here. It's good to see you out and about. Show you when always talked about how good a mother you were. By the way, some of the soldiers who served with Show you when are here today. I'm sure they'd love to see you. Look, here they come. It's an honor to finally meet you, Mrs. Hoeing. Show you when was an incredible mentor to me. I wouldn't have the nerve to wield a weapon now if it wasn't for him. I heard you were the one who taught him how to overcome his fear of the water. So, the boy taught you everything I taught him. Mrs. Herring? Mrs. Herring? Oh, I'm still here. Please, go on. I'd love to hear more stories about Show Yuan's time with the Rangers. Of course, ma'am. Why don't we go have a seat over there first? We've got plenty of stories to share with you. Before that, thank you, Shang Li Yao and Rover. Just as I said before, I knew that both of you would make my wish come true. But before I visit the Moon Tree Lodge for the answer, I'd like to walk around a bit more on my own. I trust that this answer will be right for you. Yes. Thank you, both. Do you think Mrs. Hulling understood the promise she made to her son? We can't be sure just yet, but at least she's made a good start. Don't you agree? Now she isn't just going along with us. She's searching for the life her son wanted for her. I believe she'll uncover her answer someday and make her own choice, without relying on the Moon Tree Lodge. But it means this wasn't the wish affecting Patty either. We'll have to keep digging. At any rate, more stalls are being set up in Taoyuan Vale. Care to explore further? hasn't been this busy yet. <sighs> Wind, guide me. Thank you. 
Wind, guide me. Endure and defy. Oh! <laughs> 
for battle. Yeah. Fear no more. Leave it to me.
Guide me. Ah, <laughs> uh, this again? I'm so over this cheesy old play. There are way better ones. Come on, switch it up. What about Rainbow Mirror? I'll be Flame Ranger. You be a psychic being controlled by the monsters. No way. Why do I always have to be the one getting beat up? I don't want to play the bad guy. We pinky sweared last time, remember? If I don't get to play as Flame Ranger, I'm not playing with you anymore. All right, all right. Let me think. Then let's do... Deep Sea Rescue. You can be Flame Ranger, and I'll be the sidekick. That good enough for ya? Oh, I see what you're up to, Momo. Trying to trick me again. In Deep Sea Rescue, the Flame Ranger falls into the villain's trap and gets beat up at the start. So I'll still be the one getting whacked. I'm gonna tell Mon if you keep doing this. Wait till he comes back. He'll give you a knuckle sandwich. Cha, you think telling Mon is gonna help you? With him around, you'll never get the chance to be Flame Ranger. <laughs> At least I won't get beat up by you all the time. Hey, where did this weird grown up with a flying bunny come from? Mon's not here. I'm in charge. Wanna play with us? Okay. Then you can be a monster. Detected new name entry. Bunny. Processing speed increased to 150%. Processor temperature 90 degrees, 91 degrees. Ah! It's, it's gonna blow! I'm here, don't worry. I'm overriding Shang Li's processor. One moment, please. Recorded new name entry. Bunny. Phew! I almost wet my pants. So, you're looking for Mom, huh? He's not here right now, but if it's important, you can tell me and I'll pass it on to him, word for word. Huh, <laughs> Lee's being a show off again. We haven't seen Mom for days. No way you can tell him anything. Not true. We're doing one of his favorite plays tomorrow. He'll definitely show up. We did a play yesterday and one before that. I don't remember him showing up. Where was he? Uh, oh, you suck, Momo! <laughs> well, we usually play together in the city or watch hero plays at the theater. Oh, and we have a secret base. Detected. Keyword, secret base. Mon says it's top secret, and we can't tell anyone. What? Really? Um, he did mention before that there's this flame power growing inside of him, and he's about to become a great hero, just like Flame Ranger. Well, I guess you don't look like a bad person, so... If you do find him, 
Please don't tell him I told you about the secret base. Oh, oh, and remember to tell him to come back and play with us soon. Leave it to me. Mister, I... Uh, well... You did All right. You can be the only grown-up that I tell. <clears throat> I, Mon, am about to... Well, you know, in the hero plays, every great hero, some of them are born with it. And some have... And then, after years of training, that's why I've been eating all my veggies and going to bed early lately. I want to try to practice every move I can think of from the plays, hoping my forte will awaken soon. Um, not really, but I've come up with a new plan. You know how Flame Ranger gets... So I thought, why not find a scary monster and try to find... Uh, <laughs> that was an act. If I'm going to be a great hero, I have to find an act. But, but, then you tell me. What should I do to awaken my forte? Absolutely, it's a must. Every hero becoming a hero means I can protect all my friends. None of us will ever need to be scared again. Besides, <laughs> being a hero is just the coolest. Every hero play, all my friends cheer like crazy. You know so much about it, then what should I do? Tell me, tell me! Oh, you sound like my mom. Come on, don't treat me like I'm just some kid. I do know a few warriors. They know firsthand what it means to be a hero. What if I write down some of their quests and daring feats for you? Real heroes, real stories. It might give you some ideas. Wow, really? Are they even more awesome than the heroes in the place? When will you show me these stories? I want Lee and Momo to see them too. Time, location, event, notification, the Moonlit Fair. The Moonlit Fair, right in the middle of the festival. It would be the perfect draw for the children and Jinjo. Thankfully, I've still got some time to get everything ready for Mon's wish before it starts. How about this? The Moonlit Fair, on the day of the Moon Chasing Festival. I'll have the stories with me. Pinky promise? Yes! It's a pinky promise, then! Can't wait to see you there!
I happen to catch the boy's wish. He aspires to heroism, a feat of spirit that humbles even a grown man like myself. His wish comes from a place of real valor and sincerity. However, he wishes to become a hero by awakening his forte. Awakening a forte is an intricate process, and the disparity between a resonator and an ordinary person's abilities is significant. In our current time frame, I must confess, the Academy's current research in this domain is rather limited. If we are to approach it from this angle, I'm afraid I may not be able to help the boy much, at least before the Moonlit Fair arrives. I concur. Thinking back on a few scenes from the hero plays, Flame Ranger did not rely solely on his forte and abilities to achieve his heroic feats. Courage, perseverance, and support from his companions were all indispensable elements. Your idea of finding a real-life role model to show the boy a more grounded version of heroism is indeed a viable approach. So, have you decided who this hero should be? A fine suggestion. I have always admired General Jian. However, any form of recording involving the Midnight Rangers would require prior clearance. With the moonlit fair on the horizon, time may not allow it. Actually, the person I have in mind embodies courage, perseverance, and leadership with steadfast companions who would stand by him, never backing down even in the face of powerful enemies. There's no need to look far. You are the most suitable candidate. Your actions alone in saving Jinjo have earned you the title of hero. A true hero is defined not by grand gestures, but by their actions. Authenticity is key. Just chronicle your daily life and let your true self shine through. The Pangu Terminal can record your daily activities. Before you begin, I'll make some enhancements to provide you with additional assistance. Thank you for your hard work so far. It will take some time to analyze the fourth wish. I'll contact you after it's complete. The Moonlit Fair is approaching. I hope that all the wishes in the Moon Tree Lodge will soon come true.
Good vantage point.
Come take a look at our- Welcome to the Pioneer Association store. Let me help you redeem your items. Come take a look at our official merch. Leave it to me. Shadow descends. <laughs> Break! Lend me your power, Wind Rider.
Oh my, tell you in veil. Bureau entrance.
over? Psst. I'm hungry. Panwa's got a must-try dish for the moon chasing fest. Heard about it? Can we go try it, please? Sure. Let's go try it out. Hello? What's up, Chisha? Hey, Rover. You've been to the wishing tree, right? What did you wish for? Did it come true? Oh, wait. It can't be that fast. Just leave it here, Chisya. Gotcha. Still busy with the preparations? Almost finished. It's crazy here with all these people bustling around. You hear the buzz from our side? Need to double check the procedure. Hmm? Did I just see Madame Magistrate? Was it just me? Sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to bump into you. Uh, I should have just stayed home to avoid causing trouble. Pretty hectic, isn't it? Indeed. Everyone's really giving their all for this year's Moon Chasing Festival. Oh, and the Loom Dance performance is happening tonight. Come and watch it with us, Rover. I've secured the best seats. Hooray! That settles them. We'll be waiting for you then. Before we hang up, anything you want to say to Rover, Ying Yang? Me? Uh, but I'm not ready. Okay, um... How are you doing today, Rover? I'm looking forward to enjoying the moonlit fair with you tonight. And you, Baja? Uh... Please, come early if possible. People have been preparing for the moonlit fair for many weeks. I just send the coordinates to your terminal. See you there! <laughs> Get ready to be blown away! Hmm? Are we not going to that restaurant then? <laughs> Let's eat there with Yang Yang and the others later. Yeah! Wait, I smell something delicious. It's the real deal for my empty tummy. I just know it. Isn't that... Hello, Rover. Can you come to the Moon Tree Lodge? Hey, are you done deciphering that fourth wish? Yes. As I suspected, Patty's malfunction was caused by something else. Understood. I'll be right there. Thank you. I'll see you in the usual spot. Hmm, more trouble to solve, eh? <laughs> Wait, didn't you just promise Yang Yang we'd hang out tonight? Yeah, I did. Let's go handle it quickly so we can still make it on time. How's that feel? Hate, Pascar, the world. Thank you for coming, Rover. Is that the smell of Sonoro? Patty is now a portal to a Sonoro sphere. It's built up frequencies likely resonated with something and created this. Should we alert the Midnight Rangers? But then, then people might think there's another TD outbreak. Now, since a major fight has just happened, I think we should. We'll handle it ourselves. Ah. You're already planning to do so. I can tell. It's written all over your face. Yes, I've thought it through. I believe that would be the most practical solution. If the Sonoro is benign, we can all breathe a sigh of relief. And worst case scenario, if it turns malignant, you'll have no trouble handling it. I just didn't expect you to bring it up first. I guess I wasted time hesitating. You hesitated? Because of the name Pascar? Yes. He was a close friend of mine. He died from the Wave Worn. I think... If this Sonoro Sphere is related to him, it must contain his messages for me. This is my personal request, Rover. Please help me. Sure thing. In fact, I'm also doing this for a personal reason. You are? 
I promised my friends we'd enjoy the Moonlit Fair together tonight. We can't let this incident ruin the festivity. <laughs> Thank you, Rover. Let's enter the Sonoro now. Well, like they say, you wouldn't know what's inside of an oral sphere until you're actually inside it. What's happening? Uh, the Sonoro is pushing us out! Rover, here! My hand! Father's Field hate Hothgar. The world hate Shanley Yo. Uh, Rover! Thank goodness you're awake. Mm. I'm glad the Sonora didn't throw us out. But why us? What did we even do? Maybe it has something to do with that Pascar person. Anyway, we should find Shang Li Yao first. Introduce myself. My name's Pascar. They're Modi and Ryan. What's your name? I'm Shang Li Yao. Shang Li Yao? Jeez, you're Mrs. Shang Li Yen's son. Whoa, so you're that genius everyone's been talking about? Um, <laughs> wow. I heard you've never been second to anyone in school. Mm hmm. No way! I heard you finished an entire school year's classes in one week! Mm-hmm. That's amazing! And you've solved a century-old problem for the Academy, too? Huh? Is that what they've been saying about me? You're so cool! Chill, boss. You might scare him. You're just like my big sis when she meets her idol. <sighs> Shush! <clears throat> Sorry, I got ahead of myself. By the way, we're going to the Moonlit Fair. Care to join us? Are you... sure? <laughs> of course you can. We can make you the new boss, even. The... Uh, yeah, like, our leader. But that's not important. The real question is... Do you want to play with us? I... Uh, sorry. I think I'll stay at home. I must wait for my dad. Your dad? The big inventor mentioned in the headlines? Said he's gone missing. Hey, shut up! Mm. We gotta go now. Come find us anytime you wanna play. I don't like being alone. Don't know if you feel the same. Anyway, we're here. When you need to chat or someone to hang out with. Okay. Looks like something from Xiang Liao's childhood. Hmm. Could his memories be affecting this Sonoro's frequencies? Maybe it's not just his memories. Wait! <gasps> we can go through that door now. Let's move! What is this place? A wishing stall? But the decorations don't match this year's theme. Mm, do we need a touch? 
touch anything or read anything here, like we did in the last room? There are some wish tags on the floor. Let's read them. Hoping to be heard, missing a departed son, wanting to become a hero. These are the wishes of the people I've helped. There are two more wish tags. Oh, it worked. <laughs> Your intuition can be really sharp. I can't believe I actually got a zero. What a bummer. I'm not even in the mood for wishes now. Still upset about what happened in class? I mean, aren't we supposed to learn by doing? That's what we've been taught since day one. We know next to nothing about the wave-worn phenomena, and our equipment is useless. Shouldn't we go explore it firsthand? <laughs> but how? Should we set up a lab by a wave-worn site like you said in class? It's too risky. If something goes wrong, the staff won't make it. But this is the martyrdom of science, the necessary sacrifice. Like chemists who sampled unknown substances, we must risk it all for the ultimate truth. Really? Do we have to risk it all? Of course! You want food, you pay. You want pay, you work. Give something to get something. When the truth of this world, the ultimate knowledge, is on the line, one must be willing to give up everything they have. We'll discuss it later. Modi and Ryan want to catch up. How about meeting them today? I have no time. You've been avoiding them since they failed the entrance exam. It's necessary. As intellectuals, we must walk a solitary path. Those who can't keep up will only hold us back. It's best to leave them behind sooner rather than later. Why would a genius like you care about their feelings anyway? With your father as a role model, distraction should be beneath you. Come on, what if they drag you down? But I don't think we have to be lonely as intellectuals. Remember that old Boon Tree Lodge tale from a decade ago? Write a wish, hang it on the wishing tree, and presto, your wish comes true. But let's be real, there's got to be a person running that show, because when the word got out, it just stopped working. More wishes were made, but how many actually came true? Not many. See? Not even that unsung hero of the Lodge had time to grant every wish. Our time in this world is limited, so let's focus on the truth, not trivialities. Uh... Trying to organize your arguments to refute me? <laughs> Go ahead if you must, Mr. Genius. You know, I only said that because I value you as my only friend and opponent. I just don't want you to get distracted. It's not satisfying to outdo someone when they're not at their best. Well, that's enough talk for today. I'll make my wish now. Let's see. Well, Wishing Tree, please make the wave worn happen. Then I can finally study it up close. <gasps> Pascar! <laughs> Chill, dude. Just kidding. As an intellectual, I must prioritize my pursuit of truth. Even if it means a life of solitude, then, Father. Why did I find drive shafts of your design in the Moon Tree Lodge? You were never home during moon chasing festivals. Were you busy helping other people? If that's what you did, does it mean I don't really have to be alone? <sighs> what should I do? Hey, Shang Li! What are you doing there? Come on, we gotta go now! Okay. must mean something different to him. Is that why he's running the Moon Tree Lodge after his father's passing? Is that a form of human connection too? Sort of. Are we sharing that kind of connection right now? Well, I'd say you've been haunting me. Like a ghost. Haunting? <laughs> no way. Admit it. I'm just living rent-free in your head. <laughs> sure, if you say so. Now... Back to the topic. 
We've been seeing Pascar and Shangli Yao's past exclusively so far. So? Huh. Isn't that pretty normal in a Sonora like this? But why can't we get through the doors before Shang Li Yao opens them? Ah, oh, strange indeed. It's almost as if he owns this place. Or maybe he holds the key. Is it similar to what Scar did to me? No, I can't tell for sure yet. Let's press on. We need to go deeper to uncover the truth. Empty. Our research has been great. Hopefully we'll keep this momentum going into the next year. With the progress we've made so far, we'll surely figure out the tacit fields one day. Well, we have Pascar and Shang Li Yao to thank. Yeah, where did Shang Li go? He's never here with us during the Moon Chasing Festival. end up back in the same place. Uh, something feels off here. Another failed experiment. When will we invest in better equipment for accurate results? This is pointless. The wave one has destroyed all our theories. There's no pattern at all. Our research has been a waste of time. It's all your fault. We need Shang Li Yao. Pasca. Where is Shang Li Yao? Where the hell is he? We've circled back here. Let's look around and get out of here. Quick. I can't do this anymore. It's over. I'm useless. Nonsense. It's all nonsense. Countless errors. No solution. It's not me. It's them. No. It's the world. The whole world is wrong! <laughs> Where is Shang Li Yao? You're nobody compared to him, Pascal. Guy. Mm, he smells delicious. I, I mean, uh, he looks even worse than yesterday when he wrote down his wish. The others are probably no better than him. She 
she's been affected too. Uh, even that granny has gone crazy. sound too depressing but if it ever comes true i have a feeling it's gonna be hella dangerous hmm i think i know who the remaining two will be science doesn't exist we knew it we knew it right from the start the wave one phenomenon defies all laws of physics and the worst part it's completely random. We need more data. How are we supposed to study the task field in this chaos? I knew it. We never have enough samples. Now, if we could make the wave more disasters happen more often. Don't you try to stop me, cowards. You don't even have the guts to sacrifice for the truth. You all despise me. Thinking I'll never surpass Yang Li Yao, right? <laughs> If this were his idea, not a single one of you would object. Fine. I'll do it myself. <laughs> I did it! Now I'm just a heartbeat away from success. Stay back! Stay away from here! His wish... achieved. He is not guilty. He must... A trigger the wave worn tested field. Oh, he can't be serious. So he's gonna trigger the wave worn disaster like Pascar planned to? We shouldn't jump to conclusions yet. Not based on a few broken words. He's willing to go to great lengths for other people. He wouldn't want to do that. My friend's quest for truth was genuine till his last breath. I will not let you tarnish his goal like that! Uh, it's Xiang Li Yao! He's right behind this door! But it won't budge! Then I'll smash it open! Huh? By brute force? area of the Sonorosphere. Huskar, are you there? Sorry, Rover. I must go and face him myself. Stop hiding, Huskar. We can talk it out. Oh, <laughs> 
comes up. Pierce through the stars. Reconfiguration. Hey, stop. until his last breath. I will not let you tarnish his goal like that. up and then spit out some weak frequencies. But this one smells strange. Oh. Was it affected by something else? Asgar, it's me, Xiang Li Yao. Do you recognize me? Stay back. The wave horn's coming. Stay away from here. Huh? Didn't he set it off in the first place? Calm down. We are safe here. No wave-worn or tacit field around. Nothing's happening to me. See? Xiang Li Yao? Yes, I'm listening. Pascar, what do you want me to know? I should have stayed at the Academy. I shouldn't have taken anything without permission. But I did it. I figured it all out. The tacit field's frequency. Made a prototype detector, too. It predicts where the tacit fields are forming. I... I should have kept the documents. I should have informed you. I was thrilled. Blinded by the success. But then my prototype... Gone. Everything gone. The margin of error was too big. Not enough time, not enough range. When I got there, the wave worn had already... Oh, I see. So the wave worn had devoured me. And the last person I saw was... You saw me. Yes. Yes, I remember. It's all coming back to me now. I didn't trigger the wave worn. That's what I've been trying to tell you. And what else? Pen. Give me a pen. I must write down my research results. I must show you. I need a pen. Hurry. Pascar. 
I've been trying to tell you for so, so long. I just want to let you know. I identified the tacit field special frequency. I, I never hated you. I just, I wanted to save the world. It's all in vain. Now everyone must see me as the culprit. <laughs> Can't blame you. After what I said, of course you'd... No. Your sacrifice was not in vain. Your research has inspired many. Even attracting interest from the Black Shores, that mysterious organization. They've actually sent one of their consultants to learn about the theory. Even the Black Shores? Their faces couldn't hide the shock. It was truly a sight to behold. Even I burst out laughing. We're still searching for a way to recreate your prototype, but the Pascar Spectrum Theory has gained global recognition and is advancing tacit field research. Pascar... Spectrum? Yes, it's your theory. We named it after you. Our classmates and I, we found your notes after the Waveworn receded. After filling in the missing information, we restored this theory and named it after you. Really? Yes, and we all know it wasn't your fault. So, my research actually helped others? It did, and it will keep on benefiting people. <sighs> That's great to hear. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Please. Please witness the world we've protected. On my behalf. My wish has come true. Thank you, Wishing Tree. Rover, let's witness Pascar's wish together. When I'm older, I'll be the best scientist ever. <laughs> I'll help people and everyone will love me. I'll lead the way in making lots of cool discoveries. Pascar, you've been here with us all along. Wow, so that's the real story. We've helped make four wishes come true now. <laughs> or maybe it's actually five. Five? <laughs> but we only have four wish tags here. That must be the exit. Let's get out of here first, Yao. Hey, what did you mean? <laughs> Tell me. Tell me. Are you all right? It's not uncommon to feel a bit queasy after leaving the Sonorosphere. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Given the situation is now under control, it should be fine. I will check on Patty, just to be safe. You might need some time alone to process what just happened. Uh, don't worry about me, Rover. I can handle the rest myself. It's just a quick checkup on Patty. Go join the celebration down the mountain. Remember those kids you promised to meet up with? They must be waiting for you. Besides, I need some time to prepare a small gift for you as thanks. I'll uh, catch up with you later. Huh. Oh, hey. Good to see you again. Thanks to you, Jolie and I can restart our tacit discord research. With our past experience, I'm sure we'll get better results this time. Oh, we've been busy moving the equipment to our new lab. Uh, speaking of that, can you please clean your room? <sighs> Only been a few days and it's a mess already. Piled high with papers, devices, 
and take out. I can't even get in, let alone find what I need. Have you seen Xiang Li Yao's room? It's a perfect example of order out of disorder. I learned it from the genius. And you always find things no matter where I leave them. Matt, you know my room better than I do. Well, can't deny it. Yeah! Our colleagues your show organized this event called Swim, Gulp Huff Swim. We're here to show support. Plus, Chiffon never misses tacit Discord events. <laughs> you know me. Jishou's interested in those monsters, too. Should we invite her to join our research? More brains, better ideas. Let's get the creative juices flowing. Thanks. Happy Moon Chasing Festival. Happy Moon Chasing Festival. Starting, but we saw you were busy with something else. So we we followed you up the mountain and saw you chatting with someone. And then poof! You two just vanished into thin air. We tried to ask for help, but all we found was a rabbit robot. Mr. Rabbit said you're tough and we'll be okay. He told us not to worry about you. But come on, there's no way we wouldn't worry. How can people just disappear? My mom said it only happens in Hero Place. Yeah, we had a plan. If anything went wrong, our boss and Momo would run super fast downhill to get help from the grown-ups. And I'll keep watch in case anything goes down. My eyes don't miss a thing. <laughs> you're welcome. Since you're safe now, can you show us the Hero Play you mentioned earlier? The hero in this video, is that you? His name sounds so familiar. Oh, I know. Grandpa told me you are the hero who saved Jinjo. That's awesome. No wonder you beat that monster with only a few moves. You're a true hero. And the guy fighting with you is incredible. I don't recognize him, but his mecha arm looks so cool. I want to be just like you, but I don't know how to use Forte or what it takes to be a hero. Huh? Despite wanting to go to the Moonlit Fair, you chose to stay here and protect us. You walk the walk, sacrificing your own enjoyment for the sake of others. This is exactly what the Flame Ranger would do. I see. Uh, are you saying that we are the Flame Rangers now? Yes. With your swift feet and keen eyes, you'd make a formidable team, ready to face any challenge. Together, just like me and my mecha arm partner. So, I'm a hero now. And I have my hero squad with Lee, Momo, and Mr. Rabbit. The Moon Tree Lodge really made my wish come true. <laughs> Thanks, Rover. <sighs> oh my, Taoyuan Vale hasn't been this busy in a long time. I made it! <laughs> no rush, child. Take a breath. What took you so long, when you? <sighs> Packaging. I wrapped the pastry up to keep the warmth. It'll taste better. Please, have a bite, Mrs. Hoeing. I made this myself. Thank you, dear. Mr. Shoyuan made this pastry for us during previous moon chasing festivals. Yes, I really liked it, so I asked him for the recipe. But. My son never learned to cook. When did he make this for you? He learned it in the military. At first, the food he made was, well, average, but he got better over time. He could make a feast out of even the simplest ingredients. That's how good he was. Cooking's not that hard. I can do it too. 
Shall I make a meal for you when I get some leave, Mrs. Herring? Thank you. Thank you. Researcher named Xiao Sheng? I asked around, but no luck. I'm so sorry for being so useless. I I can ask more people if you want. You can pick any of my paintings as an apology. Please choose one. I insist. Really? Phew. That's good to know. I'm painting. Yeah, lots of people. I can see all of Tao Yuan Bail from here. Um, I guess it's everyone down there. I'm not good with people, but their smiles make me feel warm inside too. It's like when I pick up a paintbrush, the warmth just spreads through me. S stunning. No, you flatter me. It's not that good. Just average. Sorry I kept you waiting, Rover. No worries. Is Patty all right? I found some unusual frequencies inside its body. Not sure if that's the Sonorosphere's influence. Out of safety concerns, I locked it up for the time being. Normally I would, but not this time, because I promised you a gift. Here, please take this. I know you're going to the Moonlit Fair. Here's a camera to capture memories for you to keep. It can be. <laughs> Maybe I should include it in the employee handbook. <laughs> Not yet. That's why I'm about to write one. I couldn't have solved this so fast without you by my side. Those wishes were their cries for help. Someone had to act fast and save them, or there could have been severe consequences. Thanks to your help, people can see their wishes come true. The fulfilled wishes bring warmth and comfort to be shared by many more. In the end, the Moon Tree Lodge kept its promise to everyone, including Pascar. What about you? What is your wish? My wish? I haven't really thought about it in a while. But I may already know the answer to your question. It's the same reason I'm taking care of the Moon Tree Lodge. I want to follow in our pioneers' footsteps. Those who forsake everything in pursuit of truth, and those who dedicate their lives to the welfare of others. My parents each embodied one path. They were my role models, and I have strived to emulate them both. Their passing left me searching for answers, for a way to find balance between the two. That was why I inherited the Moon Tree Lodge. Still, I've often questioned, how closely should I follow my parents' paths? Should I abandon all social connections in pursuit of the elusive ultimate truth? Like in a certain story. But in the end, you didn't do that. No, I didn't. Because Pascar found me and brought me out of my room. Without him, I never would have known about my father's ties to the Moon Tree Lodge. When Pascar left the Academy, I considered going with him. 
Perhaps we are the same kind of people after all. I wanted to give up everything for the ultimate truth, but I still craved companionship. That's why I hesitated. Seeking truth can be futile. It's like constantly pushing a boulder uphill, only for the lament to send it back down every time. In this disaster-stricken world, our beliefs, innovations, even entire societies risk falling into oblivion in an instant. Still, someone must push the boulder of curiosity and explore uncharted territories beyond that hill. I've longed to push that boulder, Rover. Perhaps one day, I'll give in to the urge, even if it means leaving everything behind. Because it's there. Hard to resist the temptation when truth feels so close. Almost within reach. I've been trying to tell you for so, so long. I just want to let you know. It's all right. You can venture as far as you need to. You will always return to open arms. The way you've always tried to clear Pascar's name, how he's done his utmost to tell you the truth, that's what we call a human connection. That's why your memory worked as a key in the Sonorosphere. Have more faith in humanity. The hero who pushed the boulder of truth for us all will be remembered, and the bond between people will endure. Because we are here for you, always. Hey, over here! Your friends are calling out to you. Go, don't keep them waiting. They say some vendors offer discounts to people visiting together. Yes, some of them. Well, come with me then. Make it another perk of working for the Moon Tree Lodge. Uh, but I... You have a promise to keep, remember? Thank you, my friend. Please, please witness the world we've protected on my behalf. Yes, I do. What's up with you two? Come on, let's go! about time. Behold, the Moonlit Fair's final show.
all these pigs? But why aren't you in any of them? Ah! There you go! The time-lapse mode! Come on! Let's all take a picture together! I didn't expect such a big crowd at the hearing. Mm. Sh should I take the stand myself? What do you think, little kitty? Ah, maybe we can do a little show of, um, paws. Raise your left paw if you think I should testify, or your right paw if... W wait! You raised your left paw before I even finished my sentence. No, that doesn't count. Let's try again. Okay, if you raise your right paw, I'll... let someone else handle it. Hmm... Right, Paul, huh? Well... I did actually want to tell everyone the truth myself. Let's give this another shot. Miss Jiajie, the hearing is about to start. If you would please join us. Now? Y yes Madame Juyo. I... I'll be there in a minute! Rover! Oh, you're here! It's... it's really nice to see you. And... I appreciate you coming. I just handed over all the evidence we gathered from Mingyang's studio and the Exiles camp to the patrollers. Now the Shangyun Art Exchange can't deny the fact they were producing and trading art forgeries. <sighs> but... there is one more thing. The patroller said we still need someone to testify in the hearing. Uh, but, but, I've, I've never spoken in front of so many people before. How about you do the talking and, um, I'll add details it, if I have to? Don't worry, I've got your back. Just remember, you're the only one who can lay out the truth, the whole truth, for everyone to see. You're right. I was the one who chose to uncover the truth behind this case. I can't back down now, not when it matters most. I'll give it my all, I promise. Let's go. With both parties present, this hearing is now in session. First, a brief overview of the case before us. Miss Jiajie alleges that the guilty party, Ming Yan, implicated in the tacit discord assault, was coerced into committing art fraud under duress. Therefore, her mental state was adversely affected, which led to her committing actions contrary to her will. Today, based on new evidence provided by Miss Jiajie and the result of this hearing, we will determine whether to revisit Ming Yan's charges and consider if the Shangyun Art Exchange is indeed guilty of selling illegal art forgeries. What? With all due respect, this doesn't match what we discussed before. Mr. Beitze, I remind you that any evidence or arguments presented before and during the hearing are valid. If you would like to add further information, you're welcome to do so at any point. Now, without further ado, either party may begin their opening statement. Madame Julia, the, the situation is... Madam Juya, as the head of the Shanyuan Art Exchange, I, Beitzer, must clear our name and seek justice here today. There are two points I'd like to address. Firstly, the authenticity of our artworks remains unimpeachable. Secondly, 
Ming Yan's provocative creations stem solely from her own greed and vanity. She alone should bear responsibility for the assault. Throughout my tenure at the Art Exchange, our foremost principle has been that of integrity, a well-known fact. And yet, integrity in business is not enough to stave off discord. We are aware of certain painters rejected by the Art Exchange, nursing grudges and resorting to threats. They bombarded us with spite and slander, causing a public uproar simply because they didn't get what they wanted. Should the public be swayed by these slanderous insinuations that paint us as wicked fraudsters, then I'm afraid justice will never be served. Please control yourself, Mr. Beitzer. <sighs> Forgive me, madam. But if this injustice persists, I will have no choice but to sue them for harming the Shan Yu and Art Exchange's reputation. They have damaged the trust we built with our clients. I demand they compensate us for our losses and issue a public apology. Such disgraceful behavior will not diminish us. Our principles will not waver, and we will protect the Shan Yuan Art Exchange from any ill intent. Uh. I've bought paintings from Shan Yuan Art Exchange before. They were good quality, and their service was decent. Hard to believe they'd be involved in something like this. The honest always get the short end of the stick. But who's Ming Yan? A painter? Never heard of him. <sighs> Must be some nobody trying to get attention using the Shan Yuan's name. Why is the art exchange always in the middle of some controversy? Order! Order! You may continue your statement. I... Uh... Madam, allow us to present our account of the events. This all really began three days ago. I was entrusted to investigate a certain arcane artist in the Tiger's Maw. Hey! Rover! Took you long enough to get here. <laughs> Things are getting awfully strange around the mine lately. Figured you're just the one to untangle this mess. With your knack for solving mysteries, you'll figure this out in no time. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but there's a special folktale in Jinjo. Word has it, there's this mysterious arcane artist whose paintings come to life as they paint, as if each brushstroke has a life of its own. Once their canvas dries, Whatever they've painted leaps right off the page. Mythical creatures, the whole shebang, all real as day. The thing is, anyone who might have seen these paintings, well, they vanish into thin air. Lately, I've been receiving reports about eerie monsters wandering the mine at midnight. Some witnesses even ran into them more than once. These monsters, they look like paintings from a distance, but approach them and they're as docile as can be. Reading these reports, I couldn't shake the tale of the arcane artist from my mind. Sure, some say it's just a prank or some new tacit discord variant. But with rumors swirling, folks are getting jittery. Can't let things escalate. That's why I reached out to you. Deal! I'll pay whatever it takes to keep the goosebumps coming. I can't wait for you to uncover the truth! Oh, and you might want to chat up the witnesses. Got the names right here for you. Ah, oh, that's it for today. Time for a break. Oh, hey there. Need something? Oh, you've come to the right guy. I was actually the first to see those weird things. 
I was playing chess with the old miners until midnight, then headed home alone. On my way back, I heard these strange moans like some kind of monster was out there. At first I thought they were tacit discords and I was ready to bolt. But then I realized they were different. These monsters, they were being drawn to something. Curiosity got the better of me, so I took a step closer and saw that they had these strange features, gleaming eyes, gnarled horns, and dark green bodies covered in slimy liquid. No way. Those monsters showed up in an empty field at midnight, so there was no one around to prank. Besides, what's the point of tricks if there's no one to see them? You know, I did see some people standing nearby. Just some shadows, really, because it was so dim. Well, the light was flickering in the wind, so I couldn't make out their faces. But I knew something was weird with the scrolls they had in their hands. Every time they moved, more monsters appeared. Later, I told everyone about it, and Gupon was there. She freaked out, saying it was just like the tale of the arcane artist. I I'm not sure, but I overheard them talking. No, actually, arguing would be more accurate. Anyway, I got worried those monsters might attack me. So I bolted and didn't catch what they were arguing about. I do remember. Wait, you're not seriously thinking of going there, are you? Whatever those monsters are, they're unidentified and dangerous. If you have to go, be really careful, all right? like you work at the mine. Can I help you with something? Oh yes, that strange event. It's the talk of the town right now. I've conducted several investigations and found that those monsters tend to appear around midnight. Their locations seem random though. Fortunately, they haven't caused much harm. I think it's because they always show up and vanish in the dead of night. If you ask me, these monsters are a new type of tacit discord. Since they're unrecorded, our terminal can't trigger an alarm when they're nearby. For safety reasons, we have increased our patrols around the mine. Anything else unusual? Hmm. Yes, there was one thing. Aside from the blurred silhouettes I saw that night, I remember hearing voices. Like people talking. The voices came from where those silhouettes were, but they sounded like... Vague muttering. Thinking about it now, if it was a human voice, how could someone get so close to those monsters without crying out for help? <sighs> I've gathered enough information. It's time to check the scene where those monsters were spotted. There's... something ahead. That figure. That paintbrush. Could it be... here. Huh. That's odd. Did I just imagine that? The night often sparks my creativity. A 
Of course not. I... I heard about the tale of the arcane artist and hoped to find out who they are. Sorry I lied to you. I just... I didn't want to drag anyone else into this. Bringing painted creatures to life, making fantasies real. It sounds like a fairy tale, but when the arcane artist first caught people's attention in Jinjo years ago, it was more than just a tale. Now this story is making the rounds again. Most don't see the dangers it holds. As someone who feels the threat, I... I want to uncover the truth before it's too late. Yes, there was once an artist who could create paintings that felt so real, you could almost step into them. But these paintings, they strayed from the artist's original intentions and caused a lot of trouble. I don't know who's behind these latest events, but if it's really the arcane artist, their paintings will bring nothing but trouble. That that's why I I have to stop them to prevent the past from repeating itself. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at investigating, so I haven't found any major clues yet. I'm here for the arcane artist, but also hoping to meet an old acquaintance. Maybe he knows what happened in the mine. Is that so? Oh, okay. Jujja, long time no see. You need more pigments already? N no not yet. And this must be the rover. Nice to meet you. Heard a lot about you. Didn't realize you and Jujja knew each other. But I've never had the chance to introduce myself properly. A great moment for it. Here's the thing, rover. I can't say I know Jujja very well, but I do know she's got this quirk, where her courage tends to crumble right when it's crunch time. So, when it comes to introducing herself to you, I'd bet money on it. She's been mentally rehearsing it for forever before she got the guts to take action. No, it's not like that. Judge, you can't keep avoiding things. You've got to take action or you'll never get what you want. You only live once, right? Yes, Mr. Shilang is right. Rover, I've actually been meaning to tell you something. Hello, my name is Zhe Zhi. We have met before, but I like to make this a formal request. I would really like for us to become friends. Of course, I'd be happy to. Hello, Zhe Zhe. Hey, what are you waiting for? Uh, I, um... Okay, I can do this. Um, Robert... That was a pretty obvious slip of the tongue. <clears throat> nice to meet you. My name is Zhe Zhi. I'm a, a painter. I take art commissions and strive to create beautiful paintings. I, I'm not being very articulate, but, but I hope we can be friends.
How sweet. I must say, I've never seen Judja this nervous since she first became one of my cherished patrons. Well, wait, Mr. Shillo. We're actually here today to talk about the tale of the arcane artist. Oh, I know the tale, but I've never come across this mystical maestro myself. If such an artist truly existed, I'd be the first to know without a doubt. I supply ore to pigment manufacturers and sometimes serve as their sales proxy. So most painters in Jinjo come to my shop to buy pigments. Hmm, well, pigments aren't flying off the shelves these days. Just a few regulars, you know? Oh, but those ore buyers from a while back, they seemed a bit suspicious. They bought heaps of leftover ore, the cheapest type and told me not to let anyone know they got the ore here. People don't usually buy that stuff. Oh, wait. Jijin, didn't you buy some once? A long time ago, right? I remember you saying you couldn't afford the fancy pigments, so you made your own. That stuck with me. So when those guys asked for leftovers, I paid extra attention. Are you sure you can tell us this? I thought they asked you to keep it a secret. They turned out to be thieves who stole from me during the night. But when I found out, I reported the theft to the patrollers, and that was the end of it. Thieves don't deserve my business or respect. Of course, help yourself. If this is the situation... Huh. Rover? Hey! Rover! What brings you here? It's been ages since we last met. The patrol station's been pretty busy lately, so I haven't had the time to catch up with you. And Chich is here too! Hiya! Do you remember me? We met at the Moon Chasing Festival. Oh, are you alright? You don't look well. Do you need help? Hello? No, it's not. Uh, no, thank you. The painting we had you do for us during the festival is awesome. Everyone loves it, so we put it up on the wall. Really? <laughs> I'm glad you all like it. We'd also like to invite you to our station, so we can formally thank you in person. Wait, how about coming to the station with me today? Are you heading back to the city? Uh, but we're still investig... I... Uh, okay. Investigate? About what? A new case? I get it. In that case, it's probably not the best time for a get-together. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, just tell me if you need any help. Oh, I'm here to support the patrollers. There was an assault near the mine recently, and they're short on people to investigate. What's odd is those monsters haven't caused any more trouble since we got here. Right now, we're talking to witnesses and trying to figure out what triggered the incident. Did something just happen over there? Don't tell me it's a tacit discord. Hold on, just got a message. Seems like they really are stirring up trouble again. Sorry, but I gotta go check this out. Sh should we go as well? You could be right, but there's one other thing. After Rover and I bumped into each other, we decided to investigate the surroundings and follow Patroller Chisha to the scene of the incident. It was there we learned about the details of Mingyan's offense and the truth behind the tale of the arcane artist. Once Jeju has the paintbrush in her hand, 
she begins to speak calmly. She'll be fine making the statement on her own now. to trouble you. Thanks. Uh, wait. Uh, I haven't said why. What I'm trying to say is, if I had been clearer, you wouldn't have had to explain things to Chisha for me. She's really nice. It's just, we're not that close, and I'm not sure how to respond to how friendly she is. I didn't want to be rude, so I, I couldn't bring myself to turn her down. I'll do my best not to trouble you and express my feelings properly next time. Thank you. Thanks for your help, Rover. We caught the culprit before anything worse could happen. We were lucky to have you here. According to the preliminary examination, we suspect that these tacit discords were agitated by the frequency fluctuations from a scroll painting found at the scene. The energy remaining in the painting was generated by its creator's forte, nearly overclocking. But rest assured, we've calmed her down and contained the energy. The painting needs to be thoroughly examined to identify its connection with the monsters and eliminate any potential risk it still poses. Thanks for all your help. We'll take it from here. She fessed up when I first started talking to her, but clammed up when I tried to dig deeper. Well, honestly, she seemed a bit off to me. Uh, but we don't have time for that now. We gotta clean up the scene and get the damage under control. We sure can. Why? Mingyang? Why are you... Yes, we used to take painting lessons together. You! Uh, I... I... I didn't... I... Uh, I hurt them. It... It was a mistake. I... I'm alone. I wasn't hurt. It was so close. Part of it, I guess. I saw that painter. She looked like she was losing it. I'm talking shouting, waving her paintbrush around like she was sweeping the sky. I might be off here, but I swear those things on her scroll started squirming around before the whole swarm of monsters exploded out of thin air. They started to whack and thwack people all over the place. I was terrified and ran away as fast as my legs would take me. Not super clearly, but when I was running for my life, I heard her screaming at all those creatures, all like, Stop! Don't do this! I think she might have been trying to stop them from hurting people. Ah, oh, my head. Oh, it hurts. Only a bit. It looked like she was arguing with someone right before the weird visions appeared. Uh, I heard stuff like, don't stop me! I've, I've already won, and who doesn't want fame and fortune? That's a good thing they caught that painter. Can't imagine what could have happened otherwise. Well, I've met my fair share of artists, but none that would gamble with lives for the sake of their work? That's a first for me. Already? They repeatedly describe witnessing bizarre, otherworldly visions. 
So, Mingyan channeled her forte into the painting, creating temporary phantasms. People saw her abilities and spread the rumor, believing she was the arcane artist from the tale. The monsters described in the rumors were probably just exaggerated phantasms seen by scared people at night. In fact, I had sensed something odd at the mine, but after we met, I thought it was coming from you, so I didn't give it much attention. Come to think of it now, it might have been Ming Yan's forte fluctuation. So she was there at the same time we were. I didn't even notice her presence. But what could have driven her to create such dangerous paintings? From what I know of her, she doesn't seem like someone who would take such risks for personal gain. She kept squeezing my hand and trying to tell me something, but I couldn't understand what she was saying. I think she wants me to continue the investigation. Maybe there's more to this story than I thought. Besides, I don't recall her having a forte before. Maybe this has something to do with me. Then, <laughs> if you're up for it, I hope you can join me in the investigation. Consider it a formal invitation. You want me to decide? To be honest, I haven't really thought it through. Hmm. I remember meeting Ming Yang in an art studio in Jingzhou before. I wonder if she kept going there after I left. Should that be our first stop? She may have left some of her artwork behind. That could be a good start. I've never tried to investigate anything, so I'm not sure if this is the way to go. Okay. Let's go. After learning about the details of the assault, we decided to push forward with the investigation to get to the truth. Pointless! The witnesses on the scene made it clear that it was all because of Ming Yan's greedy ambition that she- I haven't finished my statement, Mr. Bai Ci. Yes, this is the art studio. My memory did serve me right. Looks like she's been painting here. Let's find the clues. Okay. This paper, this white jade paper has a rich history. Its smooth, fine texture holds ink beautifully, exactly what you want for more delicate brushwork. Countless masterpieces, both old and new, were painted on this paper. Like Qinan's Voyage to Yum Mountain and Yiling's Qixi's Dawn of Spring, both two good examples. Whoops, I got carried away. Wait, there's a discount sticker on the wrapping, and it looks quite new. Yes, White Jade Hall runs a yearly sale. I attended it two days ago and bought paper with this same packaging. Ming Yang likely bought her paper there too. Half of the stock has already been used, which means she was painting day and night until the incident. Different papers result in different artistic effects. Real artists can always spot these differences and choose the right paper to showcase various styles. White jade paper is my absolute favorite, but because it's so expensive, I can only afford to buy it when there's a special sale. I can't pass up a great deal, so I stock up whenever I can. It usually takes a whole day to carry all the boxes home, but I must say, it's worth it. Really? Then, I'll count on you next time. We have the same painting style, and the quality of our finished works is remarkably similar. Even if we use different brush techniques, our similar styles mean we should finish a painting in about the same time. Once a painter holds a paintbrush in their hand, they won't stop until every detail meets their standards. 
it becomes an obsession. I guess this is true for most painters. There is a difference. The brushwork on this one, see how heavy it is? You can tell Ming Yang was in low spirits. And this one, the strokes are light and fluid. That tells me she was happy when she painted this. The feelings a painter has during the process of creation often linger in the brush strokes without them knowing. They're present in every line, even if the artist tries to hide it. Yes, to me, painting is like a window into the heart of the artist. When words fail, these feelings can be depicted through brushstrokes instead. Huh. It is strange though. She keeps reproducing the same painting over and over, using techniques that aren't her usual style. Waters and mountains rest by the pain, valleys and peaks in the dream remain. Colors of vanity washed away, the painted world fades, forgotten today. This artwork is titled Serenity of Xiehua Village. It captures the scenic landscape seen from the village itself. Ah, the pigment! When did I get all my clothes? Huh? It came off with just a little wipe. Hmm, it shouldn't come off the fabric so easily. Looks like there's stains from ink and paint that have been washed out over time. Mingyan could have improvised her clothing as a canvas for her ideas. I used to do this as well. Whenever nature inspired me and I was short on paper, I'd paint rough outlines onto my clothes. After all, fabric used to be a common art material. Besides, using clothes does help to cease fleeting inspiration, don't you think? It's a shame the clothes are stained forever but it's worth it to see how different inks behave on fabric. How could this happen? Being picky about one's work is second nature to an artist. I'm no exception. There's never been a moment when I saw my art outshining someone else's. I've always admired my fellow artists, hoping that one day I could be as good as them, perhaps even surpass them. I kept painting and improving, but no matter how hard I tried, I always felt it wasn't good enough. This needs to be refined. It's not quite there yet. Still short of perfect. Will my client be disappointed? I had these kind of thoughts every day while I painted. It started creeping into my daily life too. It's true that one might find motivation in these thoughts, but they can also lead one astray. I felt trapped for ages until I finally figured out the path I ought to follow. Embrace my emotions fully? and create the art my heart yearns for. This is of the greatest importance to me. But if I found myself in the same situation as Ming Yang, perhaps, perhaps I'd react similarly and lose my way. She was forced into this and was looking for a way out. I can't just turn a blind eye and let them charge her. There must be a way to uncover the truth and save her. Have a look at this. Seems like this pigment is homemade. But why are there herbs in it? Did she use a new recipe I'm not familiar with? Medicinal herb residue. She must have been making medicinal remedies recently. This must be the leftover residue she didn't get around to cleaning up. These herbs were used for medicine. Oh, so those plants I saw in the pharmacy weren't just for decoration. But I've never tried myself. When I get sick, I usually just wait it out. My family always brought me remedies and soups. 
I never thought about how they were made. Sorry, I'm just not very experienced. I think... Hmm. No, I might be wrong. Nothing. It's just a thought. I might be wrong. Then... I'll share it with you. The vase must have been on that cabinet, judging by where it fell. Looks like the cabinet used to be over there, but something bumped into it, and that's why the vase got knocked over. I bet the water on the floor is from the fishbowl. Huh. Why is that watermark in the shape of a gold puff? <gasps> okay, I figured it out. That must be the reason. Rover will definitely be impressed with my deductive skills. A gold puff jumped out of the fishbowl, knocking over the vase and causing it to shatter on the floor. Then it landed on a pile of paintings. Realizing it was in trouble and afraid of getting scolded, it slipped out of the window. Sorry, I need to improve my investigation skills. I see. I guess I jumped to conclusions. I'll do better next time. Oh yes, these are phantasms I can create with my brush. They only exist for a short while. I haven't done this for a long time. I'm a bit rusty now. Yes, I rarely need to use my forte in daily life. When it comes to painting, I prefer the traditional way. It helps me to understand my progress and improve my skills. An artwork created with forte is indeed mesmerizing, nearly flawless, but that's not my goal. So I've used this ability less over time, but it's fine to use it for the investigation. Yes, it could be related to my forte. into the studio looking for something or trying to steal something probably something tied to Ming Yang's paintings however they were startled by something unexpected and in their panic to escape through the window collided with the cabinet causing the vase to fall this might be related to the Shang Yun art exchange and Ming Yang's breakdown let's follow these tracks and see where they lead The clues from the studio led us to an exile's camp. There, we found new clues that pointed to a hidden player behind all of this. <sighs> the trolley is worn. Maybe it carried something very heavy. Could it be they transported or made pigments from them and then moved the pigments elsewhere? Could the buyers Mr. Shilong mentioned be the ones who stole the ore?
Scarlethorn, Indigoid, and Other Ore. These match the raw materials for pigments listed on Mr. Shirlan's transaction record. I took a look and noticed that these pigments were handcrafted from these specific ores. Standard pigments adhere well and last a long time, but these makeshift pigments smear with the slightest touch. I did mention this back in the studio, when my clothes got stained by Ming Yang's pigments. Did she buy these low-quality pigments from the exiles? But why did these people break into her studio? Who are you? Uh, uh, hello. Uh, we are... You're here to buy paintings? <laughs> That's not how this works. Go on, get out of here. We were actually here for Ming Ying's paintings. She wasn't in her studio, so we thought we could ask around. Huh? Okay, then. My bad. It's nothing. Just wait for her here. When she leaves, it usually doesn't take long for her to return. Know her? We go way back. She's okay in our books. Though she hasn't had the easiest run, either. She helped us out a while back. Guess you could call us friends. She even gifted us a painting. It's somewhere around here. Oh, here it is. We're no fancy connoisseurs, but even we can tell that girl can paint. I kind of like it myself. It's lively, right? Almost like you could touch the freedom and joy she felt painting it. Can't recall anything noteworthy. My guess? She's dabbling in some new secretive art piece. I spotted her taking risky stabs at painting out in the wild. Well, now that you mention it, I do remember her talking about making art you could step into or whatever. But her little art excursion stirred up some unstable frequencies. We warned her, but did she listen? Nope. That's right, I saw her paintings myself. Tried to steer her clear and what do I get? A lecture. Artists, <laughs> always on their own wild wavelength, aren't they? Sorry to interrupt, but mind if I ask what you normally do for a living? Us? Oh, the usual. A bit of hunting, some gigs here and there. Just the everyday grind. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> you reminded me. We do make and sell pigments, occasionally. Oh yeah, Ming Yan buys from us often. We give her the lowest price, just as friends do. Have an idea. Yes, I think neither of these exiles nor Minion has told the truth. I noticed some of the exiles' hands were blackened. The thought suddenly hit me. What if it's from constant exposure to ink? If so, they must be making a lot of pigments and ink sticks. The painting they showed us and the artworks in the studio, they all match what Minion described in her diary. Her diary shows us she had major mood swings, which really affected her art. All these strange things started happening after the Sheng Yun Art Exchange got involved. Good idea. I hear people talking. Okay, I'll use my terminal to record it, just in case. Oh, Mr. Beitzer stopped by again, grumbling about the delay in getting Ming Yan's paintings to the Shan Yuan Art Exchange. If Yin Feng hadn't pushed her, she wouldn't have gotten hurt. Now she can't even paint. And our order is gonna be late. Hey, watch yourself. I just did what I always do. She's been rebellious and a bit too smart for her own good lately. I just wanted her to keep her head down and work. Who knew she'd crack and cause that mess? Luckily, I slipped away and the patrollers didn't suspect me. It's no big deal. I pinned it all on Ming yet, so we're in the clear. 
Someone was here earlier asking about her case. No patrollers, but do you think they could find out what we did? Doubtful. They might notice we're making pigments here, but that's it. It doesn't matter if they find out. We pose as exiles. And what doesn't an exile do? But we should be careful. Remember what Mr. Bitesa warned us about. Keep these things on the down low. And if anyone finds out, they can't be allowed to trace it back to the Shan Yuan Art Exchange. So the Shang Yuan Art Exchange has been involved in Ming Yang's case right from the start. No wonder they got all shifty when we brought up Ming Yang earlier. It was his signature on Mr. Shizong's transaction record. When I asked him about the incident, he put all the blame on Ming Yan, saying she had ulterior motives. The exiles we questioned during the day did the same, trying to divert attention and cover up their own involvement at the scene in the first place. These distractions led us to concentrate solely on Ming Yan, ignoring other possible angles. I have a theory, but we need that batch of paintings they mentioned to test it. But there are so many more people in the camp now. How should we get in? Okay. This should do the trick. Now, let's see what information we can find inside the camp. <sighs> Never thought I'd get worn out from something this light. Wow. Thanks. I'll go take a breather then. Right, the rest of the supplies are in the northern warehouse. involved. They know where they all live too. These addresses are not too far from each other, so the art exchange must be managing its network by districts. This camp is likely the hub for this district, handling transportation and supplies. Judging from the list, it looks like they're still searching for artists to create forgeries. These paintings are all fakes. I don't remember the real ones circulating the market. How has this managed to be kept from the public for so long? They risk being exposed if they transport through ports, not to mention the threats from the Shan Yun Art Exchange. We should look for more clues. Operation? You know what? Could work something out, but it'll come at a small fee. Gotta have insurance. What do you want? A dead person tells no tales. <laughs> That's everything from our talk yesterday, boss. She's still holding her cards close. Keep an eye on her for now. If she tries anything, take her out. Understood. must be the warehouse they were talking about. There's still some leftover ink lying around. They're all from the list. This batch is all Serenity of Shehua Village. Ming Yang's work. 
These aren't just simple copies anymore. It's obvious now. She was working with them to create forgeries for her own gain. In the end, this is the path she chose. I, I suspected as much, though I couldn't quite... I mean, I wasn't sure until I saw the paintings myself. Wait, this painting? It's the Serenity of Xiehua Village original, not a copy. Shouldn't it be at the studio? Oh, I see it now. This was the painting they stole from the studio. These copies, they're almost identical to the original. But there are some details, subtle ones, that reflect the artist's quirks, not just their technique. The painter copied them well. But if you look closely, you'll find that the finishings are a bit, um, more rigid in some areas. Well, that's because I... Look out! Leave it to me. No, no. I'm just catching my breath. But where did these tacit discords come from? Her emotions caused the painting's frequencies to fluctuate, attracting the monsters. But she's not even here. It's just... I'm not really sure why her mood is... reacting to us. Maybe... Could it be because I'm here? She did see what I could do with my resonance ability once. Ever since I saw her diary, I've been wondering. Maybe it was seeing my ability that inspired her to start creating those phantasms. Maybe that's why she began to lose herself in her art. It seems like all those accumulated emotions just... just burst out whenever we get close to her or one of her paintings. It's all my fault. But... more exiles from the art exchange. You... who exactly are you people? You don't look like you're patrollers. What do you want? If it's the paintings you're after, take as many as you want. We can always make new ones. Forcing people to make copies like a factory line? It's disrespecting the creator's dignity. Ah, uh, it's just a couple of stones and trees on a piece of paper for crying out loud. Even I could draw one with the flick of a wrist. Who cares if they're real or not? For the amount of paint and ink that goes into them, I'd even go so far as to say paying those painters 20 credits each is a ripoff. How could you measure the value of creation in such a way? Oh, so you're also here for the money. Look, name a figure. We'll pay double if it'll make you shut up. How does that sound? Take it and scram. That's not what I meant. Then what the hell do you want from me? I... I want to expose everything to the public! Aside from reporting you to the patrollers, I want to let the public know about all the forgery and smuggling you've been doing. The way you coerce the painters and, and put their lives at risk for profit? I'll expose it all. 
Is, is something wrong? I... I can't remain silent about this any longer. This is the only way more people can learn about the truth. Well, you better think this through. The Shenyuan Art Exchange is not a group you want to cross. I never painted for the Art Exchange's approval. If no one else dares to speak up, then... Then I'll be the one to do it! First, we keep these guys on close watch. Then, we need to catch them off guard. And the best way to do that is... <laughs> well, that's quite the story. At best, this merely proves our involvement in the incident. Yet the real culprit remains unknown. Your accusations are groundless. Allow me to remind you. She was the one who created those paintings, insisted on selling them, and concocted the entire terrifying incident. Do you honestly believe her paintings would have earned a single penny without my intervention? No. Mr. Baizu, you're changing the subject. How ungrateful. She ensnared us in this debacle, and now you dare to lay the blame at our feet. But before we proceed, I wish to present this audio recording to the court. Oh, Mr. Baitsu stopped by again, grumbling about the delay in getting Mingyan's paintings to the Shan Yuan Art Exchange. If Yin Feng hadn't pushed her, she wouldn't have gotten hurt. Now she can't even paint. And our order is gonna be late. She's been rebellious and a bit too smart for her own good lately. I just wanted her to keep her head down and work. Who knew she'd crack and cause that mess? Minya was initially only making copies. Everything changed after you stepped in. Trickery, misinformation, and later on even threats. She was let down the path of forging artworks for you. I do understand that if her own heart hadn't wavered, none of this would have happened. But there was already no turning back by the time she wanted to quit. So saying she was the mastermind behind it all, that's just not fair. Even so, how is forgery a valid accusation? Nothing like that was mentioned in your recording, now was it? This evidence clearly shows that these paintings are no ordinary copies, but your way of making a profit. <laughs> There's no such thing as real or fake paintings. You're not fooling anyone. For it to be forgery, there has to be another original artist. These paintings are all the work of Ming Yan. Even if she made dozens of identical copies, it wouldn't be considered forgery. Mr. Baitz, do you recognize this painting? <laughs> well, of course. It's Serenity of Shehua Village, the work of the arcane artist. Then can you tell the difference between this one and the others? Of course. This piece possesses a lifelike quality unmatched by any other, all thanks to the resonance ability of the arcane artist Mingyan. However, judging from these paintings, it seems Mingyang's ability never stabilized successfully. Except for this original piece. What does this have to do with anything? Do you have solid evidence to prove the differences between these paintings? What you're saying is all speculation. There's no guarantee a painter won't make mistakes, is there? Artists seeking perfection always choose the highest quality pigments for their most important pieces. During our investigation of the studio, I accidentally got paint on me and discovered something interesting about the materials used in these paintings. The original paintings had pigments that were pure and brighter, able to blend more naturally and retain color for longer. In contrast, the forgeries used pigments made from mineral scraps. 
these don't hold up the same, smudging at the slightest touch. We can distinguish the real paintings from the fakes simply by analyzing the ink used. Doing so only proves the so-called original painting is created differently from the others. Are you implying that Ming Yan is only allowed to use a single kind of pigment throughout her work? How is this supposed to prove that we are behind the forgeries? <sighs> Because the original creator of Serenity and Shehua Village is me. When I was a child, painting was the only way I could express myself freely. Everything I did and didn't understand, it all flowed through the tip of my paintbrush. All that I saw lived within my paintings. Whatever I thought, I painted into reality. This power to turn fantasies into reality gradually caught the interest of many. Tales of the arcane artist spread far and wide. I took great joy in my skills improving. However, I discovered to my dismay that my parents were using my creations to turn a quick profit. They were sold at unbelievable prices. Some sought beauty in enchanted worlds, using the paintings as a distraction from reality. Others resorted to hellish nightmares to inflict torment upon those they desire. My own abilities had led my paintings astray. They were being exploited and everything was spiraling out of control. After I realized this, I began to fear holding a brush. I tried to paint without relying on my abilities, but my parents scolded me for it. They called anything painted without using my abilities worthless. After the family business fell apart, my parents vanished without a trace. They may have left behind a considerable mess. But freedom has also been returned to my brush. Xiehua Village was my first stop upon arriving in Jinzhou alone. Waters and mountains rest by the pain. Valleys and peaks in the dream remain. Colors of vanity washed away. The painted world fades, forgotten today. A poem I wrote, inscribed on serenity in Xiehua Village, I know it's not that well written, but it's proof of my decision to stop everything I was doing. And that painting, well, it became the arcing artist's final piece of art. Ever since that day, paintings with special abilities gradually faded from everyone's minds. And I never used my abilities to paint again. Well, that was certainly a touching story. But I'm afraid your words alone won't be enough to prove you created this painting. Madame Zhu Yao, to prove my statement, I request your permission to use and paint with one of these copies. Granted. Yes, Ming Yang's experience has made me realize something. To create art that truly resonates, I must first accept myself. The paintings I drew in the past, they were heartfelt creations, pieces of my life. They formed my past and shaped who I am today. It's not just about proving a single painting. It's about so much more. If my forte is the cause behind all this, then I must take responsibility. I can't just let this go on and hurt others.
the world inside this painting so distorted spectacle is born from the mind this place must be a manifestation of ming yang's mind when she created it what wait did you hear something <sighs> judge i painted it exactly like hers <sighs> that voice why is everyone still praising her work it's all right it's okay she's gone I'll be an even better painter than she ever was! Watch out! Lend me your power. Shadow descends. One with the sounds. Pieces I wish came from me. Bold. Free. I know art paintings have their differences, but the heart and soul we put into them are the same.
little by little. When I learned the truth, I was heartbroken. I believed that by sealing my forte, no one would get hurt because of my paintings. I never expected them to continue causing harm after all these years. But Rover's words made me realize something. It was never about the paintings themselves, but rather those who sought to use them to hurt others. Mr. Baitze, you run a highly esteemed calligraphy and painting institution, yet you've suppressed the creative spirit and violated these artists' dignity, all for the sake of wealth. Everything they cherished has now become a tool for profit. The works they held dear are just tools for your gain, insulting to both the original artists and their imitators. Set before you is the original painting from many years ago and the one I've just completed. Now, everything has been brought to light. We received word from the Public Security Bureau 10 minutes ago that they have taken the exiles into custody and found the location where the paintings were hidden. Mr. Beitze, do you have anything else to add to your defense? Very well. We will reevaluate Ming Yan's charges, determine the Shang Yun Art Exchange's involvement in the incident, and conduct a comprehensive investigation as soon as possible. This hearing is adjourned. It's finally over. I didn't miss anything important, did I? Huh? No, not at all. I was just coming up with things to say as I went. My palms were sweating the whole time. I definitely couldn't have done it if you weren't there with me. Thinking about the feeling when we were investigating the case together is what kept me calm during the trial. What I meant to say is, back then, everything I said felt right. Like I could just be myself around you. It felt so good to be that relaxed. Thank you for helping me through this. You... You helped me find the courage to believe in myself. Thanks to you, look at everything we accomplished. The Sheng Yun Art Exchange is undergoing investigation. It'll be the end of their businesses. And the painters they coerced are finally set free. Thank you. I haven't felt this happy in a long time. I want to pay Ming Yang a visit. After all, she was involved in all of this, and I want to tell her everything. What do you think? My commission started with her. Plus, you and I solved the case together. Why don't you come with me? Is the commission over? Yes. I already had it taken care of the day we found out the truth. All right, let's go. Jaja? It's been a while. Your injuries. <laughs> the researchers have taken good care of me. A chat won't hurt. And you must be the rover. I heard about everything you did. Thank you for freeing me from those nightmares. You know what, Jaja? You may seem soft and gentle on the outside, but if your boundaries are crossed, I think you can be tougher than anyone else. And I still owe you an apology. Forgive me, because I was so obsessed with wanting to be you, to be better than you. I've caused you so much trouble. The pain of these injuries managed to put a stop to my obsession with imitating your paintings. <laughs> Maybe I was never meant to be a painter to begin with. I brought you a gift. <laughs> C. 
See? Only you can create a painting with such life. I still have a long way to go. This is your painting. It's the one you gave me when we first met. I... <laughs> How ironic. I've been trying to imitate you for so many years that now I can't even tell my own paintings apart anymore. Your paintings were never inferior to mine. Just look at this piece. Even you approve of its value. It doesn't matter who painted it, Mingyang. I hope you can find your true self, whoever she is. I know you can do it. Thank you for bringing me this painting. Really. I think it's safe to say she'll give it some thought. During the few times we met, she was always passionate about discussing art with me. I think that fire inside her won't just fade away. Come to think of it, the deep discussions we had at the painting duels back then felt like true friendship. So, seeing her in so much pain, I just had to help. I don't want Ming Yang to lose hope and have someone who loves painting so much just disappear. To be honest, I didn't just see this case through to correct mistakes or help the artists. Deep down, I... I didn't want to let you down. I wanted to tell you this back at the mine, but the words just didn't come out right. Thank you for being my friend and helping me through all of this, Rover. While I have yet to uncover my past and who I am, every moment with you is a new and special memory. Thank you for your help, Jizha. This experience has helped me understand you and the world a little better. You seem to be pretty slow on the news. <laughs> You've given me the courage to joke around. Hmm. Well. Let's take it slow for now. 